If you're new to welding, the Rockwood MiG-160 might be your first welder. And that's awesome! In this video, I'll show you exactly what's in the box, what else you'll need, how to set it up for MiG, flux core, stick, and even TIG welding, and walk you through your very first weld. Let's get started. What's in the box? Here's what you get with the Rockwood MiG-160. The welder itself, a MiG torch, ground clamp, stick electrode holder, power adapter for 120 volt use, and a shielding gas hose. Great news, for flux core welding and stick welding, you only need to add consumables to start welding. That would be 030 flux core wire or some welding rods like these. If you're MIG welding, you'll need a few extras. A gas regulator, solid MIG wire in either 023 or 030. This wire will be good for mild steel you'll find around the house or on most cars. Which thickness of wire you use will be determined by the project you have in mind. 023 is good for thinner sheet metal and 030 is better for thicker structural metal. And finally, a cylinder of shielding gas. We recommend 7525, which is a mix of 75% argon and 25% CO2. This is the major difference between flux and solid wire MIG welding. Flux core has flux inside, which shields the arc as it burns off, whereas the shielding gas does that for MIG welding. Both processes protect the weld from oxygen and ultimately contamination. Without it, you will get porous welds that may fail. For TIG, you'll need a valve TIG torch, a regulator, 100% argon shielding gas, a multi-mix tungsten electrode, and TIG filler rods also sized for your project. There is no flux core equivalent of TIG. All right, let's walk through what will need to be plugged in where for each type of welding. These will actually be different for each, so make sure you have a full understanding before moving on. First, plug it into a 240 volt outlet or use the included adapter to run on 120 volts if needed. Attach the ground clamp to the negative port and move the jumper lead to the positive side. This controls the polarity of the torch. Put your wire onto the spindle, making sure to have the wire feeding off the bottom and into the roller. Loosen and pop off the tensioner. Insert the welding wire through the guide tube, then guide over the drive roller and into the wire feed hole. The roller will need to be oriented to fit the wire size you're using. When installed, the stamped marking on the side of the drive roller facing inward denotes the groove size being used, 023 or 0.6 millimeter and 030 or 0.8 millimeter. Replace the tensioner. Take the gas nozzle and contact tip off the end of the MIG torch. Turn on the welder and pull the trigger to begin feeding wire through the torch lead. This welder has smart wire feed technology, so it will speed up to quickly feed the wire through the lead. It will not do this during normal welding. Check the contact tip to make sure it's the correct size and reassemble the front of the torch. If everything fed correctly, move on to the gas setup. If the wire was slipping at the drive roller, increase tension by a quarter turn at the tensioner and try again. Install the regulator on your gas bottle. Connect the gas hose from the welder to the regulator. Open the gas bottle and check the connections with soapy water to ensure there's no leaks. With the trigger pulled, adjust the regulator between 15 to 20 cubic feet per hour. You can adjust this higher later if you notice porosity in your welds. With the wire fed and the gas at an acceptable level, you're ready to weld. Make sure to close the bottle off once finished. For flux core, the polarity is reversed from MIG welding, so the ground cable will now be installed to the positive port and move the jumper lead to the negative side. 
Install your flux core wire using the same procedure as you would for solid MIG wire. With the wire feeding easily, you're ready to start welding. This welder can be set up in either direct current electrode positive or direct current electrode negative. Positive is the more common setup for mild steel, so let's set up the machine for that. Connect the ground clamp to the negative port. Connect the electrode holder to the positive port. Clamp your electrode into the holder. With the ground on your table or workpiece and the electrode in your holder, you're ready to stick weld. TIG also features a shielding gas, typically 100% argon. So we'll start by attaching the regulator to our gas bottle. Then connect the shielding gas fitting on the TIG torch to the regulator. With everything connected, check for leaks by opening the bottle and spraying the fittings with soapy water. Open the gas cylinder valve all the way. Turn the valve on the TIG torch counterclockwise to open it. The flow rate needle will drop to a steady reading. This is the value to be used for setting gas flow. The general rule of thumb is to set gas flow in cubic feet per hour at 1.5 to two times the cup number size. Example, a number eight gas cup start with 12 to 16 cubic feet per hour. If the shielding effect is not great enough, adjust up in increments of two until satisfactory. Once set, close the valve on the TIG torch to avoid wasting gas. Unplug the jumper lead if connected. Connect the ground clamp to the positive port. Connect the valve TIG torch to the negative port. Install a sharpened tungsten into your torch. We recommend the pink multi-mix tungsten as it's suitable for most common applications. Make sure to select your tungsten size that corresponds with your project. The thicker the metal, the thicker the tungsten size. Also, select the right filling rod for your application. Same rule here, the thicker the metal, the thicker the filler rod you'll need. With your tungsten in, torch and ground set, and the flow set up, you're ready to start TIG welding. Optionally, you can also install a foot pedal for greater control of your welder. Simply install the five pin plug on the pedal into the foot pedal connector. In lift TIG mode, the pedal will automatically be recognized, which you can verify by the foot pedal icon in the center of the screen. Set the welding amperage as you would normally. This will be the max when the pedal is fully depressed. With your machine mechanically configured to either MIG, TIG, arc, or flux core, we can now enter our settings via the main screen. First, select your welding mode. There are four main options. Man MIG, for manual MIG control. Syn MIG, which is synergic MIG welding. This auto adjusts settings for you based on material thickness, perfect for beginners. Arc, which is for stick slash arc welding. And lift TIG, for TIG welding. Once you've selected your process, you can then choose your material type by clicking the material button. And don't worry, the welder will only let you select a material if it's relevant for that process. For manual and synergic, you have steel with either carbon dioxide or 7525 mix gas, flux, stainless steel, and even aluminum. Moving to the other side of the screen, we can see a variety of options for torch setup. Again, options will be available based on the processes you have already selected. We have 2T, 4T, Spot, and for stick, we have Hot Start and Arc Force options. 2T is your standard torch mode for short welds. The arc begins when you pull the trigger and stops when you release it. 4T is like cruise control for longer passes. Pull and release the trigger to start the arc and the machine will continue welding. Pull the trigger and release again to terminate the arc. Spot lets you set the welder up for multiple spot welds. Press the right side knob to set the time you want the spot weld to maintain its arc from 0.1 to 20 seconds. 
Hot Start makes starting and maintaining an arc when stick welding easier and can be adjusted on a scale from one, meaning little voltage assistance, to 50, meaning lots of voltage assistance. Arc Force helps keep your welder at a consistent overall power output while stick welding and is also on an adjustable scale from one to 100. All the way to the right, you have wire thickness diameter options ranging from 0.023, like what you would see on sheet metal, to 040 if you're welding thicker plate. Again, these will be relevant to the process you choose with MIG having 0.023 to 030 and Flux having from 030 to 040. You'll only need this option in synergic mode to help the machine dial in your settings. Finally, in the center, we have save and recall. These are where you can store settings if you find you're doing similar tasks constantly, such as switching between sheet metal and frame steel. We'll use the chart inside the machine as a guide and set this machine up for manual MIG, 7525 gas, 2T, and for 20 gauge sheet metal, so 80 inches per minute, and voltage at 15.1. With the settings locked in, we can long press the save recall button, which will bring up the save menu. There's 15 slots to save your settings. You can choose which slot by scrolling with the primary knob. Happy with the slot, click the save recall button again. Now, if we mess up our settings, then click save recall, it will pull up our 15 slots and we can select the saved one we want. Now, we're ready to weld. While we're discussing the control panel, let's also show you how to enable and disable the smart wire feed feature. Simply select man MIG, 4T, adjust wire speed to 100 inches per minute, and then press the torch button until the 4T indicator blinks. Do it again to turn it back on. Stick welding is plug and play. Switch to arc mode and adjust your amperage based on the rod you're using. You can use the chart inside the lid as a starting point, and you can further adjust the hot start and arc force settings to dial in your welder. TIG setup is simple too. With the machine set to lift TIG, your valve torch connected to negative and ground cable to positive, simply set your amperage for the material and tungsten you're using. You can use the chart inside the lid for a starting point. Then open the argon flow and strike an arc. Make sure you've sharpened your tungsten and selected the right cup size for your project. FluxCore is great because it doesn't need gas and your welder is ready to go right out of the box. With the wire loaded in, make sure you're in either manual or synergic mode and flux is selected. Using the chart on the inside as a guide, you can input your initial settings or select material thickness in synergic mode and let the machine figure it out for you. Note that these settings are in hundredths of an inch, so you may need to do a quick calculation to get the setting. For example, 3 16th is about 19 hundredths of an inch. With the settings all in, you can pull the trigger and start welding. MIG is by far the most common type of welding and what a lot of you are looking to do. With your solid wire installed, shielding gas selected, regulated, and connected, your torch on positive and ground on negative, we can set the machine up for our project. Using the chart on the inside as a guide, you can input your initial settings or select material thickness in synergic mode and let the machine figure it out for you. Note that these settings are in hundredths of an inch, so you may need to do a quick calculation to get the setting right. For example, 3 16th is 19 hundredths of an inch. With the settings all in, you can pull the trigger and start welding. Let's do your first weld. Before you strike your first arc, make sure your ground clamp is on clean metal your wire or tungsten is installed, gas is flowing, and you're wearing proper PPE. That's gonna be a helmet with a shade 10 or darker, gloves appropriate for the task you're doing, 
and a welding jacket to protect you from UV and sparks. We're going to do a super simple example and set this machine up to weld some sheet metal. Something like you would run into if you're welding a patch panel on. We have two coupons here, and after dialing in our settings, we're going to be running at 15.7 and 130 inches per minute. We've grinded them and cleaned with pre-painting prep, so we're absolutely ready to weld this. This will be a butt weld where two pieces are butted up against each other. We'll start by tacking the left and right of the coupons so they don't move. Then we can start on the left and work our way across, stacking little tacks across the surface. And there you have it. You've successfully taken two pieces of metal and joined them into one and done your first weld. There is a ton of information when it comes to welding that we definitely can't cover all in an introductory video. So make sure to check out our extensive library on our YouTube for all our favorite tips and tricks when it comes to welding. The Rockwood MIG-160 is designed to move with you. So you can start with simple MIG projects and move into TIG, ARC, or anything more complicated as you grow comfortable. If this helped you out, drop a comment and hit subscribe for more beginner welding tips. And if you want to learn more about this welder or any of our other tools, head over to eastwood.com.